Raging Cajuns RPI skyrocketing. It's Locked On Sun Belt. You are Locked On Sun Belt, your daily podcast on the Sun Belt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. I don't even know how to wear a hat anymore. Uh, all right. Uh, Raging Cajuns win again. Uh, their RPI is skyrocketing. Sunbelt play opens up this weekend, and we got spring practice underway. App State may be done before other teams start. Today's episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada, and go find your next big adventure. Check them all out today at NissanUSA.com. Also, am I the only one? I'm still, it's hard to believe, because this was almost, it's not a week ago, but half a week ago. I'm still tired from the time change. Is that a thing? I, I You know, I don't, you know, that's crazy. Uh, I changed my workout schedule today because I'm still too tired. So it is what it is. All right. Uh, Raging Cajuns with a nice win last night over uh, Louisiana Tech. Did not start out well, down uh, 3 nothing, And uh, then their bats uh, came alive. Kyle DeBarge, although just one for five yesterday, after he was one for five, did his average, he started out four for 28, which was basically about two weeks, right? It starts on a... Friday, and that was like two weeks later on a Wednesday, right? The next game would have been two full weeks, but this is about two weeks. Four for 28. He hits a home run uh, in the midweek ball game against Northwestern State, and that snapped him out of it. After his base hit last night, where he was one for two, got a base hit in his second at bat, he was hitting 460. He started out hitting about 142, and he hit. He's now hitting about 460. So a little bit lower since he only went one for five. Uh, and even though he got a uh, he got into a double hit into a double play uh, where Matt Deggs got ejected because of an interference, I, I guess I don't know the rule, but Trey LaFleur did go up with his spikes high. So it, it is what it is. Uh, DeBarge hit that ball on the nose. I mean, it was smashed. So you hit into a double play bad, hit the ball square. That's good. Uh, so the Cajuns uh, beat Louisiana Tech 9-5, to five, their longest winning streak of the season, which is not great, but it's three, so hashtag always a bright side. This is their longest winning streak of the season. And it's hard to believe, and I really didn't start to look, admittedly, until, well, probably Sunday. After I drove from Lafayette to Pensacola, and then after the uh, basketball games, semifinals in Pensacola, went back, did the podcast, and looked at the... RPI and heading into Saturday's, we talked about this heading into Saturday's matchup uh, against Tulane, not Sunday's, but Saturday's matchup. They were 236, 236 after two walk-off wins against Tulane. They got up to 110 after their win against Louisiana tech. They were 97. I'm sorry. No, they went up 110. So they were 126. Uh, so they went from 236 to 126. And it fluctuated in then because, you know, Tuesday people play. Went Monday people play and Tuesday play and they didn't. So it kind of, you know, it's updated. Warren Nolan updates it at, instantaneously. And that's what we're going by. And then last night they they won and they went up to 97. They're back down to 98 today. Uh, again, it fluctuates. West Coast teams play later, whatever the case may be. So they're at 98. And then, remember, I told you I checked them out. They had a huge 20 and 10 uh, projected conference win. That's what they projected him. All right. And it's all a math thing. He's not going through it every time and checking it off. However they do against their most recent foe is inserted and based on everyone else's winning and we're losing on uh, Tuesday when I got back, they were slated for a uh, 20 and 10 conference record. Then somehow I changed to like 16 and 14. And now today on Thursday, they're back to 19 and 11, 38 
and 18 overall, actually. That's a better record. Somehow, that's a better record than before. Than before. They had a 20 and 10 conference record, but they were going to finish up. They were only going to finish up 36 and 20. Now, Warren Nolan has the Cajuns at 43 RPI with a 38 and 18 record. That is, that, I mean, that is straight bubble talk. All right. You're a group of five. That's 43. That's straight bubble. However, I just find it fascinating that the numbers can change so quickly. So now, you know, we'll start this, you know, previewing this, the Sun Belt. They go to Arkansas State. Arkansas State, and we were talking about this in basketball. They got off to a great start, but Arkansas State's RPI is 196. That doesn't help the Cajuns at all. In fact, it may hurt them. I, it would be tough to imagine that they take two out of three and see their RPI fall, but it just might because a loss to a 196 RPI team, one loss is more is more hurtful than two wins against a 196 RPI team. So that's an issue heading into spring ball. I did have a commenter saying that, you know, there's not a whole lot to base it on early on in the season. And that may be true at the same time. If the Cajuns were sitting at 30 RPI, I'm sure he wouldn't care. <laughs> you know, that was, you know, but they're sitting at one, uh, 26 at the time makes a difference. We'll see how the rotation is. I tried to find out if the rotation was the same Lagman and then Herman and then Fluno for the Cajuns. Uh, we'll see. All right. I, I will also say that I presume just like every other team for the most part is a work in progress. All right. Just to make sure we understand where this team is compared to, well, I don't know about other teams yet. Uh, we'll get into those for sure. But Jack Martinez, and it is Martinez, spelled Martinez, but no accent, Martinez, went from a Friday night starter, went from Division Three Trinity to Friday night starter for the Raging Cajuns. That lasted two starts. Then he gives up a home run on the weekend in Houston and gets into it with the pitching coach, Gunnar Leger, and now he's on mop-up duty in midweek. That's how fast things change. He pitched, he pitched last night against Louisiana Tech in what was a 9-2 to ball game. Cajuns beat him 9-5, to but it was 9-2, to I think, at the time. So he's gone from Friday night opening day starter to mop up duty in the midweek. We'll see if that changes, right? Life is all about making the adjustments, but he has struggled flat out adjusting to a group of five play and even, even you know, chin up against the big boys, you know. I think he gave a big home run to a Vandy. You know? uh, that was the thing. So these things uh, are a constant work in progress. Very odd. I don't know really what it means. The Cajuns had their 16th lineup in 16 ball games last night. John Taylor led off for the Cajuns. Now, he needs to get going, and he did. He had a home run that I'm not sure got more than 10 feet off the ground, a rope down the right field line, two for four. He is hitting 281, so he's coming around, but he was two for four last night. Again, that is the 16th lineup for the Cajuns in 16 games. They're now nine and seven. We'll see what happens. Uh, moving forward uh, this weekend, you'd like to lock down a couple of guys in the spots, but that's what they did uh, last night. All right, let's check out the rest of what's going on in the Sun Belt uh, this weekend. Quickly, I know softball-wise, big in Mobile, uh, South Alabama hosting the Louisiana Raging Cajuns. That, that's, a, a, that's a great series to start Sun Belt play, and I believe uh, Friday night's game is is sold out. So that should be a lot of fun. Uh, Becky Clark, great coach for the Jags and Jerry Glasgow. We'll see that that's still not going. They eked by McNeese, uh, got by out of a bases loaded jam in the seventh. They win two to one over McNeese on a Wednesday, but that's still not going. So it's a work in progress for the Cajun softball team, but they are opening up Sunbelt play against South Alabama on, in Mobile. Uh, this weekend. All right. When we come back, we'll check out the baseball Sunbelt Conference uh, coming up right after this. Let me tell you about Nissan. This week's March Madness Bracket highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. 
Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest, just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs. These guys were able to take it to the next level. Well, I would say JMU, <laughs> but the Houston Cougars can only be described as an armada. This top-seeded team is as hardcore as it gets out there, so no wonder it... Th- so it's no wonder they're expected to land a top seed in the tournament after their first season in the Big 12. Watch out for JMU. They are ripe to upset a number five seed. We'll talk about it. <laughs> and take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. All right, Dave Schultz, locked on Sunbelt, your team every day. That wasn't to knock Houston. No, no, let's make sure we understand that. Houston's a great team. They, they will be a top four seed, and they won't have to be playing JMU until a Sweet 16 matchup, potentially. But just watch out for JMU. Also, uh, rumors have it, and I like starting rumors, rumors and perpetuating rumors, but the rumor, rumor mill has it that Coach Mark Byington will be on this podcast for tomorrow's episode. Those are the rumors. We'll see <laughs> if those come true. Uh, all right, uh, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Let's check out the Sunbelt uh, schedule for this weekend. Starting uh, conference play, and I guess I didn't see any great, huge matchups. That could be uh, that could be a me problem, to be honest with you. Um, although I, I'm wrong about that. James Madison is taking on Coastal Carolina. Those are the top two teams in the RPI right now. <laughs> no, that, that, that didn't go very well for me. No, those are the two top teams in RPI right now. Let's see where we are in um, Warren Nolan. Coastal Carolina is 13, and James Madison is 17. So that is a great series to start off uh, Sunbelt play. I think that may be more, I could be wrong here, that may be more of a measuring stick for uh, JMU than it is Coastal Carolina. It is in Coastal Carolina. So we'll see where we are uh, with that. So that's a good uh, series there. Uh, Old Dominion has been scuffling a little bit. They did take down Princeton yesterday to split that series with the guys from a two-game series with the guys from the Ivy League. Old Dominion, Old Dominion hosting uh, Georgia Southern. Uh, as we mentioned, the Cajuns going to Jonesboro and taking on Arkansas State. Arkansas State started out really well uh, this year and have uh, scuffled as of uh, lately. Let me see what happened. Like, they... They fall on that hard at times. Let's see what we got here. They're 11 and seven. Yeah, they started out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. No. So they're three and seven. They had even a win over Ole Miss. They lost to Central Arkansas in a midweek game. Okay. They lost two out of three against Missouri State. Missouri State is a top 20 RPI team. Okay. Uh, they lost to Murray State. It was an RPI of 40. Uh, they uh, took two out of three from Eastern Illinois. That's a 250 RPI for Eastern Illinois. But again, baseball is its not meant to be swept. Uh, they did lose. Oh, they lost to Little Rock. I thought they beat Little Rock. That's my bad. And they lost to Memphis. So they, ha- again, they are three and seven since their uh, eight no start. So they are scuffling uh, just a little bit. And that's why it's important. The Cajuns, again, baseball is not meant to be swept like that. Um, Baseball is different than the other ball game, than the other sports where usually, you know, a fluky play in college and basketball is like a three-point bank shot or a half-court shot. Now, you see those all the time, but they don't happen on a regular basis in every game, right? We're talking yesterday, the the Cajuns got a two-run double because the Baltimore chop bounced over the first baseman's head. So the pitcher makes a great pitch. The ball hits the dirt in front of the plate or the carpet, whatever it is in Louisiana Tech, in Ruston, and bounces over the first baseman's head. That's fluky. That kind of thing happens all the time in baseball, right? You get a little, you get a little flare off the end of the bat. It falls in for a base hit, and if that does it in in Louisiana in Lafayette, that can go for a two run a two run base hit. 
right? If it's a little flare and you can't get to it because you can't play it, can't play it on a big hop, uh, or you have to play it on a big hop or else it'll get past you. Those are the kinds of things that are fluky. Or you can, as I mentioned earlier, smoke one up the middle and it turns into a double play. And that's what happened to Kyle DeBarge. So that's where baseball is a a little bit more flukier than the other sports. All right, elsewhere in uh, the Sun Belt, let's see what we got here. All right, App State taking on uh, Texas State. Marshall is at Southern Miss. Uh, ULM hosting Troy and South Alabama. They're off to a really good start. They're taking on uh, Georgia State. Let's see where they are. They were 30th heading into uh, or following Tuesday's win over Mississippi State. They fell to 32. They're 12 and 5. And again, it's very interesting how uh, Warren Nolan predicts this. They're still predicting, well, now they're predicting an 18 and 12 conference record. That was like 16 and 14. 30, 32 and 30, uh, 32 and 23 overall RPI of 60. All right. Let's see Georgia State. What happened? Oh, this is the prediction. Um, They take on Georgia State this weekend. Georgia State's an RPI of 100. You got to take two out of three. If you're South Alabama, and that may be the kind, and then Georgia State's only eight and nine. That may be the kind of series because it's at home where you got to sweep. Again, baseball is not meant for that, but when you're playing at home, that's the kind of thing you have to hope for. All right. And uh, Mark Calvi's uh, crew off to one of their better starts, I think, in, in recent memory. Uh, all right. Let's take a timeout. Uh, spring practice is underway. Uh, one team don't have a spring schedule yet, uh, another team almost done with spring ball. Uh, We will do that when we come back right after uh, this. I tell you about fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experience with smart TVs, as well as a fire stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on the latest and all in the world of sports. March Madness, NBA, Major League Baseball, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. I have it. I have Fire TV. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com. Slash locked on fire TV and eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easier to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers. All right, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Uh, Spring practice. Let me see if it's in total full swing in the Sunbelt. It feels like many of them are about to open it up. App State's done. (laughs) Well, not really. They're going on spring break, and I guess the uh, spring game is is coming up shortly. They're almost done. They started mid-February. The only one that I could not find, and it could be a me problem, uh, the Cajuns don't have a date for anything yet. I'm a little bit disappointed. I, I did check on the website. I do not know when the Cajuns are starting spring ball. It's got to be coming up. 
uh, since everybody else seems to be starting as well. All right, so Coastal Carolina started on March 12th. Old Dominion on March 12th, just starting uh, this week. Uh, also starting March 12th was a uh, ULM Southern Miss started just after App State, maybe a week after App State. They started February uh, 22nd. Arkansas State just started yesterday on the 13th. Uh, and then the rest are starting either next week or uh, late at the end of the week. So Georgia Southern, Georgia State, uh, and Troy are all on the 19th. JMU, Texas State, and South Alabama all on the 21st. And Marshall is starting on uh, the 25th. All right. Some of these places got quarterback, not, uh, not uh, issues, but uh, competition, right? App State does not. Joy Aguilar is, is pretty good there. And I think I saw App State's got a lot of guys returning. Like their only opening spots is on the offensive line. That's big. But when that's the only thing you're concerned about, expectations are really going to be high for JMU uh, or for App State. But uh, JMU's got their quarterback situation. I think Georgia Southern has their quarterback situation. You got a whole new coaching staff at Georgia State. We'll see who the quarterback is at Marshall, quarterback at Coastal Carolina. Old Dominion has their quarterback. That's set. I think the Cajuns have their quarterback. We'll see. We'll see who the Troy quarterback is. Uh, ULM's got about 50 new players, so <laughs> they got a whole lot of holes to fill. Uh, we think we know who the Southern Miss quarterback is, right? The Florida State uh, transfer. That would be the heavy favorite. Uh, Texas State is going to be Jordan McLeod, the Sun Belt Player of the Year, so that kind of is settled. Uh, the freshman, soon-to-be sophomore at Arkansas State will be the quarterback. And I think South Alabama's quarterback situation is pretty much set heading into play. So maybe about half the schools have their quarterback set and half uh, do not. So it'll be interesting to see how that uh, all materializes uh, this spring um, for the Cajuns. We we're waiting for the, or not for, for everybody, for the Cajuns, Ben Woldridge is expected, but he may, he may not be ready for spring ball. So it could be a situation where, Chandler Fields is taking all the snaps in spring ball. We'll see if, if Ben is ready. I'm not exactly sure he is, he is going to be ready for spring uh, practice. All right, we will try. We need to get baseball coaches on. We need to get uh, football coaches on. The effort is, for those uh, Georgia State fans, appreciate you watching. Again, the, uh, the request has been put in for Coach Del McGee. Uh, but as you can imagine, uh, he's a little bit busy. So we we appreciate that. We, we don't think it's a whole lot of time, 15, 20 minutes to hop on. But you can appreciate, um, you know, moving the family, um, you know, putting together a staff, recruiting, spring practice. So I, I can appreciate that. So uh, we're hoping to get Del McGee on uh, when he's available. And again, the rumors that I like to start and perpetuate a Mark Byington of JMU's basketball team. Um, could be on the show for tomorrow. So <laughs> hopefully that is uh, the case. All right. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, looking forward to it. And I still don't understand why Sunbelt, like softball starts a week before baseball. And why is Sunbelt play only starting this week? Did I miss that? I, I don't know. In both baseball and softball. So I don't get it. Again, that could be a me issue. Uh, thanks so much for tuning in to Lockdown Sunbelt. We're continuing to grow. Over 1,150 subscribers. Really appreciate it. Getting oh so close to 1,200. Uh, a lot of times when the NCAA tournament, that's where we popped a little bit last year, was when Tennessee um, and the Cajuns played. So we'll see who JMU plays, and we'll get some people from that. And then uh, and then more more as college baseball uh, continues to, uh, to get out there. So, again, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm your host, Dave Schultz. You've been watching and listening to Locked On Sunbelt. Your team, every day. Whoops.